So if you go to nodejs.org, you need to install version 8 or higher on your operating system, whether you are using Mac or Windows, it doesn't matter. You can install Node, go to nodejs.org, and then click on the recommended uh, version here. This is now 12.17 and you need to uh, install a version that's 8 or higher so click on this button and it's going to start installing um, downloading node and once node has been downloaded you need to open it and then once you open it just click on continue and then here you need to agree to the license so click on continue and uh, agree and then it's gonna start installing if you click on install but I have already installed uh, node before therefore I'm not going to click on this install but if you click on install it's gonna start installing and nothing more it's just going to start installing and it's gonna give you a message here that says node has uh, been installed successfully and that's it so I'm gonna stop right here because I have already installed Node. So I'm gonna um, exit out of, out of this window. And then once you have Node installed, what you need to do is that you need to open your terminal. Go to your terminal and open it. And if you are using Windows, you need to open CMD, Command Prompt in Windows. And let me zoom in so that you can see now. And in the terminal, you can type here Node and then hyphen V in order to check if node has been installed successfully or not and as you can see it's gonna if node installed successfully it's gonna give you the version and uh, also you can check if npm has been installed which gets installed immediately after you install node so I'm gonna type npm and then which is the by the way which is the package manager for uh, node uh, components and node uh, packages and then minus V to check the version. Once you have run these um, two commands and uh, made sure that these two, may, uh, made sure that uh, Node and NPM are installed, you can continue. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to create the project folder. And it's very important to create the project folder in a location where it's easy for you to access. So I'm going to create the project folder in my desktop. So in my desktop here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create here a new folder. I'm going to create a new folder and then I'm going to name it. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it project. Of course, you can name it whatever you want. And then what you need to do is that you need to drag this folder and drop it on Visual Studio Code and it will be opened. So once the project is opened in Visual Studio Code, as you can see, now we can start working with this project. Now we can start adding files and uh, folders and structure our project. So the first step that we need to do is that we need to run a couple of commands. So here in my project, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on view and then terminal. And this is going to open up a built-in terminal where it's going to allow me to run commands here inside Visual Studio Code. So I don't have to open up the external uh, terminal that comes with my operating system. Instead, I can uh, I can use this and it's going to do the same ex exact job. So here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to type the following. I'm going to say here, npm, npm, and then install. And then hit enter. And as you can see, this is going to create the package uh, JSON. The second thing that we need to do is that we need to say npm. Let me here clear first. And then I'm going to say npm. And then I'm going to say init. Init. npm init. Minus y. And then hit enter. And this is going to create the, uh, the package JSON. As you can see, the package JSON has been created. Now... What I'm going to do is that I'm going to install Express. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to run the uh, I'm going to run the following command in order to install uh, Express. I'm going to say npm and then install install. Let me run this in a new 
I'm gonna say I'm gonna clear first and then I'm gonna say npm install and then save and then express express and then hit enter and this is gonna start installing express we also need to install the EJS so I'm gonna say npm install EJS so this is gonna allow me and then I'm gonna say save this is gonna allow me to pass data to the HTML and then I'm gonna hit enter and then this is gonna start installing EJS and then the last thing that I'm gonna install is the uh, request in case we want to use it so I'm gonna say npm install and then save and then request and then hit enter and this is going to start again installing the request and now we are good to go after installing this on the left side you will find that now we have a folder called node modules which includes any module or any library that has been installed such as the express that i have just installed so now we are good to go now we have all the packages and modules that we need in order to start working on our project so now what we need to do is that we need to create here the files and folders that we need in order for our project to work successfully so first of all here we need to create the main starting point which is going to be the index so here I'm going to create a new file and then I'm going to name it index dot js this is very very important this is going to be the main file uh, the main starting point where whenever we want to run our application this file is going to serve as the provider of everything pretty much everything it's gonna it's gonna connect uh, the the uh, modules with the front end with everything so this is very very important the second thing that we need to create is a folder called public so here what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a new folder called public and this folder is going to contain the CSS and JavaScript and images so here I'm gonna inside that folder I'm gonna create three folders I'm gonna say here new folder first I'm gonna create the CSS and then I'm gonna create another folder here new folder which is gonna be the JS and finally I'm gonna create a third folder for the images I'm gonna say image IMG so we have here in the public three folders CSS image and the JavaScript now in the CSS I'm gonna create a file called main.css and in the script in the JavaScript here I'm gonna create a new file called script.js so now we have these three folders and they contain the main.css and the, the script.javascript so this is this should be the 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 content of the public folder the last folder that we want to create is the views the views is very important because the views is going to contain the html code so i'm going to here create a new folder called views and then inside that folder I'm gonna create a new folder another folder called pages pages and then inside that we can create any HTML file that we want inside that uh, pages but I'm not gonna create uh, these files now the HTML files because I'm gonna create them whenever we want them to uh, whenever we want to work on them but for now you need to know that in the views we have a folder called pages and inside that pages I'm gonna create the HTML whenever we have an HTML file I'm gonna create it in the pages so as I told you the index.js is gonna be the most important file and it's gonna serve as the uh, connect the, the point that's gonna connect everything in our project and it's gonna deliver 
the uh, the 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 HTML to the user so that the user will be able to interact with the application. So this is why the index is very important. Now, the first thing that we want to do in the index is that we need to create a server, a local server, because obviously in Node.js, the purpose of using Node.js is to create a server that's gonna serve the uh, the pages to the user. So to create a server here, I'm gonna use Express. So first we need to import Express. So I'm gonna say here, let me zoom in first. And then here, the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say var and then express, and then it's gonna be equal to require and then express. Require, and then in single quotes, I'm gonna say express. So this is gonna import the express. And the ex express is already, uh, has already been installed in the node underscore modules. If you open the node underscore modules, you should find that we have the express here, express. So now I have imported the express. The second thing that I'm gonna import is the EJS. So I'm gonna say here var and then EJS, which is gonna be equal to require, require, and then I'm gonna import the EJS, which is gonna allow me to pass data to the HTML whenever I want to. Now, what I need to do is that I need to create an object of this express. I need to create a variable. Uh, of, uh, I need to use this express. So to use this ex express, I'm gonna create a variable called app, and this app is gonna be equal to express, express. I'm gonna call this function, this express function. So this express function is going to be stored in this app and I will be able to use this app to create a local server. So now this app is very, very important because this app, I'm going to be using it uh, throughout this file to create and deliver data to the user, to deliver, pa deliver pages to the user. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to create a uh, server. So first, to create a server, we need to say here app and then we need to call a function called get we need to call a function called get and then this function get takes two parameters it takes the url that you want uh, that you want to the parameter is the callback function that you want to uh, use to to uh, to send something to the user to to display something to the user so i'm going to say here function and then this function takes two parameters it takes the request and the response. And then inside that function, you can return something to the user. So this function is gonna return something to the user and we can specify whatever we want to return to the user. So now that we have this callback function, what we want to do is that we need to return something to the user. So to return something to the user, we need to use the response, this parameter. So here I'm gonna say res, and then that send, and then you can send whatever you want to the user. I'm gonna say for now, I'm gonna say hello. But now we can run our application, but we need to specify the port that's gonna be used to run our application. So to specify the port, we need to say app, and then dot listen app.listen. And then we need to pass the port that we want to use. So usually I use the 8080 port. You can use whatever port you want. You can use 8000, you can use uh, 8100, whatever whatever port you want, but usually I use 8080. Now I need to save. I'm going to click on file and then save. And the final step is that we need to run our application. So how can I run my application? To run the application, to run a node application, first you need to open up the terminal. I'm going to click on view, and then terminal, and then in the, in the terminal you need to type the following. You need to type node, and then the name of the file. So what is, what's the name of the file? The name of the file is index.js. So I'm going to say here index.js. And now if I hit enter, all I need to do now is that I need to head over to the browser, and I need to go to the local host. So I need to go to, 
I need to go to local host, local host, and then colon 80a because the URL is just forward slash, which means that we need just to go to localhost. So what I'm going to do it now is that I'm going to head on over to my uh, my browser, which is Google Chrome. So as you can see, if I go to localhost and then call on 8080, it's going to send me this message. It's going to say, hello. As you can see, it's going to just say, hello here. So it worked successfully. And now the user will get this message whenever they go to this URL. So now we have a local server that delivers a very basic message to the user. So now what we need to do is that we need to deliver HTML to the user. As you can see here, I just sent a very simple message to the user. And rather than sending um, a text message, I'm going to send a HTML well-designed pages. So how can I do that? To do that, we need to render an HTML page rather than sending a message like this. But before I do that, we need to tell our uh, we need to tell Express, hey ex Express, now we want to use HTML in our application. And to do that, we need here to say we need to say app and then dot use. And then what we want to use is that we want to use the express. I'm going to say express express dot express dot static 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 and then public static and then public public so what is this this is going to tell express to use the public folder to deliver this public folder to to for the for to use the the static uh, to use the the CSS and the JavaScript and the image in our application. So this is very important. This is a very important step. The second thing that we want to use or want to do is that we need to say here app and then that set and then we need to pass two parameters. The first parameter is that we need to say view view engine engine view engine. The second parameter is the EJS. This is basically going to tell Express to set the view engine to EJS. So it's going to tell uh, Express to use the EJ, EJS, e, EJS as, the, as, our, uh, as our view engine. So these two things are very important. Now what we need to do is that we need to create the HTML file. So remember here in the views pages, I have created a folder called pages. And I told you that here in this pages, we, need, we can create any HTML file we want. So here, let's create our first HTML file. So here, I'm going to right click on this pages, and then I'm going to create a new file. And then I'm going to name it index. But instead of naming it, instead of giving it a um, extension of HTML, we need to give it an extension of e js because the ejs is now being used as the view engine and then hit enter and now we have our first html file and don't freak out if you if you don't know what this uh, ejs is this ejs is just going to just make things easier in terms of sending data to the html and here in this index that EJ, ejs EJS, we can use HTML. Don't worry about that. We can here, we still can use HTML and uh, CSS normally. There is no problem at all. Let me show you that. Here, I can here say H1, and then I can say hello world. As you can see, I can use HTML here. Now, in the index that it's that JS, I'm going to return this, this, uh, this HTML to the user. So what I'm going to do here is that in the index, instead of sending, instead of saying response that send, I'm going to say response dot render, response dot render, and then I'm going to specify the page, the HTML page that I want to return. So here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say pages, and then forward slash, and then index, because I want to return, I want to return the index. This index. I want to return the index 
that's inside the pages. So we need to say pages and then forward slash index. And we shouldn't say views. Views is already known by node. So node knows, already knows that the views is used for the, for the, uh, for HTML. So don't worry about that. All you need to do is that you need to specify any subfolder inside the, the views and then the name of the file that you want to return without the extension. So don't say EJS. Never do that. It's not going to work. You need to say pages and then forward slash and then the name of the file without the extension. So now what we need to do is that we need to test. We need to test whether this is going to work or not. So if you head on over to the browser and refresh, nothing is going to happen. So why is that? The reason is because whenever you edit, whenever you uh, whenever you change something in the index, what you need to do is that you need to open up the terminal. You need to open up the terminal and then you need to click on this icon. You need to kind of close down the terminal completely. And then you need to open up a new terminal. And then in the new terminal, you need to type the same command. You need to say, you need to say in the new terminal, nod and then index.js and now hit enter now if I head on over to the browser and refresh as you can see I'm gonna get hello world which is the h1 remember this is the h1 message this is the h1 file this is the h1 hello world so this is how it works and this is how you should always restart the the server you need to close down the terminal first and then you need to open up a new terminal in order in order for this to work successfully. Welcome back. Now what we need to do is that we need to include this template into our project. And since this is not an HTML and CSS course, I'm not going to create the template from scratch. Instead, I'm going to use this template for, for my project. So to use this template, you need to follow a few steps. And if you want to use your own template, feel free to do so, but you have to learn how to uh, the steps in order you, you need to take in order to include this successfully. So what you need to do is that we need to open the project and the template. So I'm going to leave this template, this template for you. I'm going to leave it. Uh, you can download it. So on the right side we have the template, and on the on the uh, on the left side we have the template, and on the right side we have the project. So in the project, we need to create in the in the views pages we need to create this uh, HTML so I'm gonna copy this and then paste it here and then I'm gonna rename this to I'm gonna rename this to um, cart.ejs and then I'm gonna create another one I'm gonna name it um, checkout.ejs we also need uh, about. I'm going to create another one called this one is going to be called about about.ejs. And finally, we need products. Rename this. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to say products.ejs. We also want single product. I'm going to here say single underscore product dot ejs now I'm gonna open these for example I'm gonna open the index in the in sublime text or any text text editor and, I'm, and then I'm gonna control a to select all and then copy and then in my project I'm gonna open the index dot ejs and I'm gonna remove everything and then I'm gonna paste the code similarly similarly I'm gonna open the uh, check out uh, the uh, cart and then select everything and copy and then I'm going to paste it in the cart.ejs next we need to open the checkout and then copy everything and then paste it in the e, in the checkout.ejs. We also have the about. Let me open it. I'm 
and then copy everything and then paste it in the about.ejs finally we have the products and the single product I'm gonna open the products and then copy every, everything and then I'm gonna paste it in the products.ejs and finally we have the single product I'm gonna copy everything and then I'm gonna paste it in the single product now I'm gonna save everything save all and we are done welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to inc include the CSS and the uh, images and the JavaScript from the template so we need to open the CSS from the template and select all of these we need to select all of them here all of them select all of them and then copy and then paste them in the public in the here in the project in the public in the CSS and we need to do the same with the images I'm gonna open the images and then I'm gonna select all of the images all of them and then copy and then I'm gonna paste them in the images folder of my project which is this finally we need to open the JavaScript and then we need to select all of the all of these and then paste them in the JavaScript however since the template the template here we we uh, are using images instead of image IMG I'm gonna rename this to images images now if you let me run my project terminal and then I'm going to run my project and let me head on over to the browser and refresh now the template will work as you can see this is the template now we have the template welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to install a library called body parser a module called body parser so to install it we need to open the terminal and then we need to type in the terminal npm install body hyphen parser and then hit enter and this is going to start downloading the body parser module now here if it says like this it means that uh, it has been installed now we need to import it so at the top of the index uh, dot js I'm going to say var body parser is equal to require require body parser body hyphen parser and we also need to add a piece of uh, code a configuration here after this app we need to say app dot use and then body parser dot URL encoded and then we need to pass a, a um, an object and this object will have a key and a value so the key is extended true we need to say extended true true so this is the piece of code that we need to add in order to start using the body parser and then click on file and then save friends.org you will be able to install XAMPP where you can install PHP and the Apache server and also MySQL database and you can download the XAMPP application depending upon your operating system so I'm going to click here on a click here for other versions and choose your operating system and I'm going to choose XAMPP for Mac and the version is going to be 7.2 so this one I'm gonna download this one click on download and once it's finished you can now open the installer and the process is very very simple and straightforward for all operating systems you can just click on a few nexts and it will install XAMPP for you so if you are using Mac then you can follow along if you are using another operating system 
then the process is, is very, very similar and it's self-explanatory. And it might ask you for your PC or Mac password, so you need to type it. And it will open a wizard where you can just click on a few nexts and it will install them for you. So here, once here it opens this wizard, click on next and then make sure you check these two and click on next and then here it says that it will be installed, XAMPP will be installed inside applications slash XAMPP folder, click on next and you can check or uncheck this if you wish to learn more about XAMPP and then finally just click on next and it will start downloading. Finally, once it's finished, you will find that XAMPP has been installed in your applications. So as you can see here, I have XAMPP and these are all of the files. In order to use PHP version 7, you need to head on over to your terminal and make sure that you are using a uh, PHP version 7. So here I'm going to type PHP and then version of uh, hyphen version or V and here it says 7.2 and if it doesn't say here PHP 7.2 then you need to make sure that you add the to add um, XAMPP to your path and in order to do so just open your uh, bash profile and inside bash profile make sure to add these two lines at the end of the file path equals to slash applications slash XAMPP all capital letters and then slash XAMPP files slash bin and then colon and then dollar sign path and then export that path so these two lines are very important in case your Mac is using um, PHP version other than 7.2 so make sure you add these two lines in your uh, dot bash profile and then save make sure that you save after that click on save and of course you need to close the terminal and open a new terminal and make sure that you are uh, now using PHP version uh, 7 First of all, to download PHP, we are going to download Champ. So click Champ inside Google, and now you have this website, ApacheFriends.org. Click on it, and yeah, and now you have all the downloads for all the operating systems available. Click on the one that you are using. I'm gonna um, I'm using Windows, so I'm gonna click on Windows, and here it says the version of PHP. It, it's 7.2. So click on it, and it's gonna start downloading. And after it, um, it's finished, what you need to do is just click a few nexts and you are good to go. And this is here a short video that uh, tells you how to do so. It's just a few, a few nexts. Um, it's not difficult at all. I'm going to stop here downloading because I already installed it. So after installation, you should find it. Here, as you can see, I already have... I already have it so if you click on the if you search after installation for champ you have the control panel click on it and you have this panel and um, the one that we are going to use is the Apache the server so that we make our our uh, computer as a server you need to click on start and the MySQL as well so that we can use MySQL for Laravel. You need also to click on start. Welcome back. From now on you need to open XAMPP and then you need to make sure that your MySQL database is running. May I click on start in order to make it work and then the Apache web server select the Apache web server and then click on start. And then they must say here um, running so we need to wait uh, until it says here running 
So as you can see, running, running. So always make sure that your MySQL database and the Apache Web Server are up and running. Because if they are not up and running, you will not be able to continue working on the project. Welcome back. Now what we need to do is that we need to install MySQL. So the first step in order to install um, MySQL is that you need to open the terminal. So I'm going to here click on View in, um, in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to click on View and then Terminal. And then I'm going to type the following command. I'm going to say npm install and then mysql. And then hit enter. And this is going to start installing mysql. So as you can see here, it says uh, up to date, uh, audited, blah, blah, blah. And then so this is how you can install mysql. Now we have mysql and we can start using mysql. Welcome back. Now we need to start using MySQL. And in order to start using MySQL, you need to follow a few steps. The first step is that you need to open XAMPP and make sure that it's up and running. Make sure that XAMPP is up and running and, and your MySQL database as well as your Apache Web Server are up and running. The next step is that we need to head on over to the browser and then type localhost forward slash dashboard. And then click on PHP My Admin. The next step is that we need to click on user accounts. So if you click on user accounts, you'll find so many accounts. The one that I'm going to be using is this one, is this one, is root 127.0.0.1, and the password is nothing. Uh, and by the way, we can use localhost rather than using the, rather than typing 127.0.0.1. So I'm going to be using, instead of using this number, because it might be confusing for you and you might not understand uh, uh, the, what the, these numbers or this IP um, uh, mean, I'm going to be using the last one, which has a host name of localhost. So now we need to open the project. And in the project, we need to import MySQL. So at the top, I'm going to say var MySQL is equal to require require and then my sql my sql the the third step this is the second step this the third step is that we need to here establish a connection so i'm going to say my sql dot create connection and this create connection takes an object so i'm going to pass an object and this object will have the following. First, the host. So the host is going to be the, if you open, if you go back to MySQL uh, database, you'll find that here we have the local host. So we need to say host name is local host. Here, I'm going to say local host. And then comma, and then user. The user is root. Remember, the user here, username is root. And the password is nothing. So I'm going to say user root and then comma and then password. The password is empty. And the last thing is the database. Data base. So we need to create a database. In order to create a database, we need to head on over back to my SQL, to uh, PHP my admin. And in, in PHP my admin, I'm going to click on home to go to the first uh, page. And then I'm going to create a new database. Here I'm going to click on new. And then I'm going to create a database. I'm going to name it node underscore project. And then I'm going to click on create. And now we have a new database called here node, as you can see, node project. Now in the here in this object, we need to say node database node underscore project. And we are done. So these are the steps that we needed in order to start and establish a connection with the database. Welcome back. Now what we need to do is that we need to add some products into the database. So the first step is that we need to open XAMPP and then we need to start the MySQL server and the Apache web server. And then we need to head on over to the browser and type localhost forward slash dashboard. And then click on PHP my admin. Now you will be taken to PHP my admin and we have the database. I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to click on, I'm going to here create a new table here. The table name is products. 
and the products table will have here uh, uh, say almost seven columns so the first column is the ID the second column is name the third column is description and then price and then sale price sale underscore price and then quantity quantity and then image so for the ID it is it's gonna be integer and it will be auto increment here auto increment and primary it's it's gonna be primary the primary key is the ID the name is gonna be far car 255 the description is gonna be text the price is going to be float the price is float 8 comma 2 what this means is that it's going to contain uh, uh, it's it's going to be it's going to consist of a max uh, of a maximum of 8 uh, 8 digits and two of these 8 dig digits are the digits after the point so the maximum number that we can add is uh, 6 nines and 0.99 so this is the maximum number the sale price the sale price is also here float 8 comma 2 you can increase this to 10 if you wish if you want to have 10 digits uh, and two of the, those eight, eight, uh, 10 digits are after the point you can do this the quantity is integer the image is text and we are done finally click on click on uh, save and the the table will be created let's insert here a few products but before I do so I'm gonna insert two more uh, columns here I'm gonna insert the category category and the type so the category is gonna be VARCAR 255 the type is also gonna be VARCAR 255 and then save and I'm going to also say here null, null. Now, if you click on the structure, you will find that we have now uh, nine, um, nine inputs, nine uh, columns. Also, we need to change the sale price. We need to click on change, and then we need to make it null. We need to make it nullable, meaning that it could be null because you are not going to uh, provide you are not going to provide sales for all your products therefore if the products is doesn't have um, a sale price it's going to be null now make sure that your sale pr price says here null this is very very important now let me click on insert and start inserting products whenever you are inserting a new product it's very important to know whether you are going to provide sale or not if you are providing a discounted price you need to type the discounted price here in this uh, in this uh, uh, blank however if you are not providing a sale price you need to keep this checked keep this checked so again if you are providing a sale price you need to type the sale price here for example 399 and uncheck this you need to uncheck this and then type here the discounted price for example for example the original price is 499 and the discounted pr price is, is 399 however if you are not intending to provide um, sale price you just need to check this check this and keep this empty this is gonna make the sale price null whenever the sale price is null it means that you are not providing a sale and the original price is the is the price that will be the, is the price that the customer will be charged whenever you are inserting a new product it's very important to know wh whether you are going to provide sale or not if you are providing a discounted price you need to type the discounted price here in this uh, in this uh, uh, blank however if you are not providing a sale price you need to keep this checked keep this checked so again if you are providing a sale price you need to type the sale price here for example 399 and uncheck this 
you need to uncheck this and then type here the discounted price for example for example the original price is 499 and the discounted price is 399 however if you are not intending to provide um, sale price you just need to check this check this and keep this empty this is gonna make the sale price null whenever the sale price is null it means that you are not providing a sale and the original price is the is the price that will be is the price that the customer will be charged welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to display the real products that we have because these products are hard-coded instead of, of displaying these products we need to head on over to the database we need to connect to the database and get these products that we inserted into the, the database to do this we need to uh, head on over to the index.js and then here we need to make connection so we already have this code we can copy this part copy and then I'm gonna paste it in the forward slash root here I'm gonna paste it here and then I'm gonna store it in a variable I'm gonna say var con is equal to my SQL connection and here we need to say the name of the database so the name of the database, if you head on over to the database, you'll find that the name of the database is Node.js, uh, Node Project. Therefore, I'm going to say here, Node underscore Project. So this is the name of the database. Uh, next, what we need to do is that we need to use this con. I'm going to say con, and then query, query, and then the query is the first parameter is the query which is select all select select all from products and then comma and then arrow function with two parameters the first parameter is error and the second parameter is the result result now inside this arrow function what we need to do is that we need to copy this line the render we need to copy it and then we need to paste it inside here inside this arrow uh, callback function and we need to return we need to say comma and then return with the result 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 now we can use this result in the index that ejs to display the result welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to loop over the phones that we got the result that we got and display every everything we have uh, uh, stored in the database everything that we got from the database will be displayed now so let me open the views and then uh, index and then in the index we need to look for the products so the products is this is in uh, the products are in this section if you scroll you'll find that we have here we have this we have this we have this but the products is here this is the end of the header this is the about about brand and the uh, client and then the footer so the the uh, uh, if you search for phone let's search for phone here here so here this area brand under this brand so here what we need to do is that we need to remove these products and keep only one I'm gonna remove this 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 and this so I'm gonna remove these and I'm gonna keep only one because we need one to use it for the loop so here I'm gonna create a loop I'm gonna say uh, smaller than and then percentage and then space and then result dot for each for each capital E for each and then function function and then inside the function we need item item and then here daily bracket and then percentage and then greater than and you have to be very careful with this syntax and then at the end at the end of this we need to close the curly bracket so here I'm gonna say percentage uh, smaller than and then percentage and then we need to close the curly bracket and then we need to close 
the um, here we need to close the curly bracket and then we need to close the bracket and then percentage and then greater than now in between we need to display the data uh, uh, the, the keys we need to access the keys so the keys are the first key is for the uh, image for the image we need to say here um, uh, we need to say uh, greater than and then percentage and then equals to and then item item dot image and then percentage and then greater than and then for the price we need to say percentage uh, great, smaller than and then percentage and then equals to and then percentage and then greater than and in between we need to say item dot price and then here we need to say that we need to say uh, smaller than and then percentage and then equals to and then percentage and then greater than and in between we need to say item dot name and we are done we are done let me save and uh, we can now head on over to the browser to test so i'm gonna first open my terminal terminal and then i'm gonna close down this one and then I'm gonna open the a new terminal and then I'm gonna say node and then index.js and then hit enter now in the browser let me refresh I'm gonna refresh and as you can see we will get the real products we have here smart, uh, Samsung phone 399 and in the database the first product is Samsung phone and the cost is, is uh, 399 the second is iPhone 7 799 and that's correct iPhone 7 799 so now we got the the real products we have in the database welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to display the sale price some products have sales here some products we have sales and others don't have for example here this one it has a sale but I'm going to remove this to just to show you the difference and what's what's going to happen when we have a sale when we are offering uh, a discounted price for some product and uh, when we, we when we aren't uh, providing a discount. Uh, I'm going to show you the difference and what we should do. So what we should do is that we need to check whether we have a discount or not. And to do this, we need to use a statement. So here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add some space here. And then here I'm going to use if statement. I'm going to say smaller than and then percentage. And then if, and then I'm going to check the item dot sale price, sale underscore price. If we have a sale price, then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to display the original price. Uh, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to say here style, style, and then is equal to uh, text. Decoration, decoration, line, through, through. And then I'm going to display the uh, discounted price above. So the discounted price here, I'm going to say item dot and then sale underscore price. And I'm going to remove the line here because this is the original price here by the way it should be a hyphen text hyphen decoration else if we if we don't have a sale if we are not offering I'm gonna say here uh, else else first you need to close the curly bracket and then else and then open a new curly bracket and then percentage and then greater than and then here we need to close the curly bracket and in between if we don't have a sale we just need to display the original price which is this without without the text without the line through I'm gonna remove this line through let me now save and let's test I'm gonna open the terminal and then I'm gonna test I'm gonna refresh and we have here an error let me check where the error is so the error is here uh, 
I forgot to close this. Let me save and let me refresh. And as you can see now, if we have a discount, the discount will be displayed here. This is a discount, this is the discounted price, and this is the original price. However, if we aren't providing a discount, such as in this uh, phone, we just display the original price. So now it looks much better and looks amazing because now the customer will be able, able to compare the, uh, the original price with the discounted price. And they can base their decision on uh, this discount that you are providing. Welcome back. Now what we need to do is that we need to insert, we need to download the say, express session in order to be able to use the uh, session in our application. So to install the session, the express session, we need to open the terminal. I'm going to click on view and then terminal to open up the terminal. And then in the terminal, I'm going to type the following. I'm going to say npm install express hyphen session and then hit enter and this is going to start installing the uh, express session which is needed to use the session now in the index what we need to do is that we need to use the session we need to at the top we need to say here var and then session is equal to require require and then express hyphen session we also need to um, I did we, we also need to set it the secret of the session what is a secret a secret is just a key that is important for the session to work properly and to add the the key the uh, secret we need to say app dot use and then session and then this session is going to take is going to take a, an object this object has key and value the key is secret the value secret the value can be anything it must be a string but it can be anything it's it's usually a long uh, string of um, of uh, characters you can name it whatever you want i'm going to say secret secret it's better to name it secret because it's simple and easy and straightforward so this is how we can how you can install the session and uh, and specify the secret and then we can now uh, continue working on the project normally welcome back from now on you need to make sure that your mysql database is running and also the apache web server is running otherwise you will get this error so let me now refresh. If I refresh, the error will be gone because I started the started started the uh, the uh, MySQL database and the Apache web server. Now we need to add a button here uh, that says Add to Cart. So I'm going to open the um, the index.ejs and then I'm going to create here below this. I'm going to create a form. I'm going to say form. And then I'm going to give this form action. The action is going to be for slash add underscore to underscore cart and method. The method is going to be post because we need to make a post request. Inside this form, we need first a button. I'm going to say input, and that input is going to be um, is going to be submit. The the type is submit, and the value is add to cart. Now. If you head on over, if you run your script, of course, to run your script, you need to open the, you need to click on view, and then terminal, and then you need to type, you need to type um, node, you need to type node, and then index.js, and then hit enter, and this is going to start the server. Now, if I refresh, you'll find that we have a button for every single, for every single, um, uh, product we have a button but it doesn't look good so we need to fix it to fix it first I'm gonna move this form inside the dev so I'm gonna copy this form and remove it and paste it here inside this dev now if you save and refresh you'll find that the button is inside the container inside this container as you can see it's inside the container 
However, we need to give it some style. I'm gonna say here class btn btn hyphen primary primary. Now, if you refresh, you'll find that it looks much better now. As you can see, it looks much better. Now, what we need to do is that we need to um, add to this form. We need to add the uh, the product details such as the price, the name, all of these things. Because we by this by doing this, we will be able to add the product to cart. So we need to store in this form hidden inputs. The first input is going to be hidden because we don't want to display it. We just we are just using it to store data. The name is ID and then the value is going to be equal the value is going to be equal to uh, greater than uh, smaller than and then percentage and then equals to and then item dot ID and then percentage and then greater than. That's it. This is for the ID. We need to copy this ID now input and paste it many times. We need to paste it here one, two, three, four, five times because we need to store also the name. I'm going to say here name and then name and then and then we need also the uh, price and here price we also need the sale price sale underscore price and then sale price sale underscore price we also need the quantity I'm gonna say here quantity quantity however here we cannot say item dot quantity because if we do so we will get the quantity from the database and this is incorrect here we are not displaying the quantity we have here we are getting the quantity that the user is going to buy therefore here we need to say one by default I'm gonna add one item to cart and then later we will allow the customer to increase or decrease this quantity lastly I'm gonna say image and then item dot image and we are done now we have one two three four five six and the button the next step is that we need to create this add to cart root or URL in the index.js welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to create the add to cart URL and get this data from the form so I'm gonna open the index.js and then in the index.js we need to say here app dot post because we are using now a post request and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say for slash for slash add underscore to underscore cart and then comma and then function function this function is gonna take as usual the request response now inside this function we need to get the data from the form so to get the data from the form we need to say request rec dot body dot and then the, the name of the element that we are interested in so if you open the index that ejs you will find that we have the id the name the price the sale price the quantity the, the image we need to get all of them using their names so here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to say request body dot id first the id and i'm going to store it in a variable called id so ID is going to be equal to this and then var request var, na var name is equal to request dot body dot name and then var price is equal to request dot body dot price and then var sale underscore price is equal to request dot body dot sale underscore price and then var quantity quantity is equal to request dot body dot quantity 
Finally, we need to say var image is equal to request dot body dot image. We need now to add these in a variable called product because this these um, these um, uh, inputs or the, these uh, variables uh, refer uh, to a specific product. Therefore, we need to say product product and then we need to create an object I'm gonna say object and then I'm gonna store these by their uh, names so I'm gonna say ID colon ID and then comma name colon name and then price price and then sale price sale price and then quantity quantity and then image image finally before we continue make sure that you have the body installed so at the top of the code you need, you need to make sure that the the um, body parser here is installed and make sure that you have this line app use body parser dot url encoded extended to this line of code now we are done with this part and we have the this product make sure that this is also correct welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to continue working on the add to cart function so in order to add a product to cart we need to store it in the session and we already installed the session so before we store it in the session we need to check whether this is the first product or not I'm gonna say if and then request dot session that cart if there is something in the cart already it means that the cart it means that the user has already added something to cart and we just need to uh, get the cart from the cart first and then append the data to it so what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna say I'm gonna say inside this var cart is equal to request that session dot cart because we already have a cart and then we need to check whether there is a product in the cart or not. So I'm going to say if, and then I'm going to create a function called is, is product, is product in cart. And then I'm going to negate this. I'm going to say exclamation, which means that if the product is not, if the product is not in the cart, what we need to do is that we need to push that product in the cart so we need to say cart dot push and then we push we push the product we push the product in the cart and then else else if we don't have a cart if we don't have a cart let me push this else if we don't have a cart we need to create the cart so we need to say request dot session dot cart is equal to an array of only one product which is the first product and then I'm gonna say var cart is equal to request dot session dot cart and then we we need to return to the cart and I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on this later now we need to focus on uh, checking whether a product in the cart or not welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to create this function is product in cart so here I'm gonna create a new function here I'm gonna say function function and then I'm gonna name it is product in cart and it's gonna take two parameters the first parameter is the cart and the second parameter is the ID of the product that we have that we want to check whether it's in the cart or not so we need to pass here two things we need to pass here we need to pass two things we need to pass the cart as well as the ID so here I'm gonna say cart and then comma ID now let's work on the function so this is the function is product in cart how can we check uh, whether a product in the cart or not? Well, it's fairly simple. All we need to do is that we need to loop over the cart using for loop. I'm going to say for 
for let let i is equal to zero and then i is smaller than cart dot length i plus plus i plus plus so here what we need to do inside the for uh, loop we need to get each product and to compare it with the id if the id matches it means that the product in the cart if there is no match it means that the car the, the product is not in the cart so i'm going to say here if and then cart of i dot id is equal to id if that's true it means that the product is in the cart so if this is true we need to say return true true and then outside the loop outside we need to say return false so if there is no match and if we end if if the uh, if the for loop ends it will return false which which means that the product is in is not in the cart however if there is a match it will return true therefore here in the add to cart uh, url we here when we, when we call this function and when we negate this it means that the product is not in the cart if this is if if it returns false then we push the product in the cart else we don't return we don't push the product in the cart because the product is already in the cart welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to continue working on this url add to cart so once we add the product on in the cart what we need to do is that we need to do two things first we need to calculate here calculate total the total uh, we need to calculate the total um, uh, amount and also the, the quantity so I'm going to create a function called calculate calculate total and this function is going to take two parameters the first parameter is the cart and the second parameter is the request finally we need to return we need to say we need to say here return to cart page to cart page and in order to return to the cart page, we need to create a URL called cart. So I'm going to say res response, short for response, and then redirect. And then we need to redirect to forward slash cart. That's it. Now we need to work on the calculate total, and then we need to create this URL. So I'm going to create this URL. I'm going to say here app, and then dot get slash cart and then fun and then uh, uh, comma and then function and then request response Rick Rick res request response and later we will work on it now we need to work on the calculate total welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to work on the calculate total function so at the top here I'm gonna create a new function let me close this function and then here I'm gonna say function and, and I'm gonna name it calculate total and it's gonna take two parameters the first parameter is cart and then the second parameter is the request why do we need why would we need the request we need we need the request because it contains the more information about the request and we will also be able to use it to get the total uh, from to store the total in the session because the request has access to the session so here I'm gonna say total is equal to zero and then we need to loop over the products to calculate the total I'm gonna say four and then let I is equal to zero and then I I is equal to zero and then I is smaller than the cart that length and then i plus plus and we need to access here i smaller than cart that length and then i plus plus now inside this loop we need to uh, say if cart if cart of i uh, that uh, sale price if the say if we have a sale price then we need to 
we need to use the sale price. We need to say total is equal to total plus total plus cart here cart of i dot sale price else else uh, before we do else we need to multiply this by the quantity so I'm gonna say here multiply multiply and then cart of i and then multiply by quantity one tt in order to get the total else we need to use the uh, price total is equal to total total and then total plus cart of i and then dot price and then multiplied by cart of i and then quantity multiplied by the quantity one dt and finally we need to store this in the session so I'm gonna say request that session and then I'm gonna create a new key called total total is equal to the total total and then we return re total we, we need to say return return and then total let me explain this function so this function is gonna take the cart and the request first the total is zero and then in order to get the total we need to loop over the cart in order to get each single uh, product from the cart and get uh, both the price and the quantity here if the if uh, if we have here by the way I should say like this I should close this bracket uh, square bracket uh, here if if cart ID sale price it means that if there is a sale price if we are offering 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 a sale or a discounted discounted price then we need to use the sale price else it means that we are not offering any uh, sales therefore we need to say we need to use the price and then we multiply this the price by the quantity to get the total here by the way I should say like this and then remove this from the end and then finally we say request session dot total to create a new a new uh, uh, a new key in the in the session and we store the total in the total key and then we return the total here in the in this uh, function in the car calculate total make sure that the syntax is correct so here we need to say cart and then I of I dot sale price multiplied by cart I dot uh, quantity make sure that this is dot quantity not asterisk so here dot quantity make sure that this is dot quantity and then click on file and then save welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to get the cart and the total and display them in the cart page so to get the cart we need to say var cart is equal to request dot session dot cart because the cart is stored in the session in a key called cart similarly we need to say var total is equal to request dot session and then dot total now we can we can pass these down to the to the cart so to pass them to the cart we need to say here response res dot render and then we need to render the pages 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 and then forward slash cart similar to this similar to this we need to say pages for slash cart and then comma and then we need to pass with us two keys and two key, two key value uh, pairs the first is the cart 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 and then comma total total and we are done with this part the next step is that we need to head on over to the cart and access the cart and the total and display the value display the products that are stored in the cart welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to open the views pages cart and then in the cart we need to loop over the cart so here 
we need to say smaller than and then percentage and then cart dot for for each with a capital E and then we pass a function function and then item item and then here we need to open a curly bracket and then we need to say percentage and then greater than and then at the end at the end of this table we need to say smaller than and then uh, percentage and then we close the bracket we close the curly bracket and then the bracket and then percentage and then greater than now in between we need to display the uh, the information of each product so here instead of name we need to say percent uh, smaller than and then percentage and then equals to and then item dot name and then percentage and then greater than and then we need to use this format I'm gonna copy this format and then I'm gonna paste it here here I'm gonna display here I'm gonna display the price so I'm gonna say here item dot price and then here I'm gonna display the uh, the the total the the subtotal the total here uh, here the quantity first the quantity is one by default the quantity is one so we need the price and the name and we need here the uh, subtotal so the subtotal here is equal to uh, the uh, item dot price multiplied by the item dot quantity quantity we also want to display the images of the image of the product or products so to do this we need to say here images and then forward slash and then greater than uh, and then smaller than and then percentage and then equals to and then item dot image and then percentage and then greater than and we are done let me now save and test I'm gonna save also make sure that you close the bracket uh, above the table so make sure that this is above the table tag so make sure that this is above the table tag welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to uh, here determine which price we will display so if if there is a sale we need to display the sale price if there is no sale then we need to display the price therefore here we need to say smaller than we need to use if statement we need to say smaller than as a percentage and then if and then item dot sale underscore price if the if there is a sale then we need to say here percentage and then uh, greater than and then here we need to display the sale price so I'm gonna here copy this and then paste it and then I'm gonna say item dot sale underscore price else else I'm gonna say here else carry the bracket and then else and then carry the bracket and then percentage and then greater than and then here price and then close this carry the bracket and we are done also with the quantity below here with this quantity with the subtotal we need to do the same thing so I'm gonna say here if statement and then I'm gonna say if sale price sale underscore price then we need to display the we need to use the sale price to calculate the subtotal so I'm gonna say here item dot sale underscore price else else curly bracket first and then else and then curly bracket and then we need to copy this line copy this line and then paste it in the else here and then we close here this syntax here this this is the syntax so again that's this is gonna work like this 
first if there is a sale we need to use the sale price else we use only the price so here if sale price if is not um, is, is not null if sale price is available if we have if we are offering of if we are giving a discount then we need to use item that, that uh, sale price to calculate this up total else else it means that the sale price is not provided it means that we are not um, giving a sale then we need here to say item that's price multiplied by the quantity also here I forgot to say here I forgot to say item dot sale price I should say here I should say item first item dot sale underscore price that way we will be able to use this if statement we use this if, if statement to determine whether there is a sale or not so again that's item dot sale price and then if there is a sale price we multiply the sale price by the quantity else we multiply the original price by the quantity and then we display the subtotal here in the table also make sure that you close the bracket uh, above the table so make sure that this is above the table tag so make sure that this is above the table tag welcome back now we need to test in order to test first of all make sure you that your Apache web server and MySQL both are up and running next you need to um, click on view and then terminal and then here let me close this terminal and let me open a new one and then I'm gonna here type node and then index dot js and then hit enter and then in the, in the browser now if I refresh I will be taken to the website as you can see now let's add a product to cart so if I click on add to cart it will add this product to cart so as you can see the product has been added to cart welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to dis display the total here and instead of this 100 I'm gonna remove it and then I'm gonna say here smaller than percentage and then equals to and then total total and then percentage and then greater than that's it now the total will be displayed here instead of this total instead of the old total which is what which was just a number a hard-coded number now we will get the total and it will be displayed here welcome back now we need to work on removing a product from the cart so how would we be able to remove a product from the cart well in order to remove a product from the cart we need to know that product and to know the product we need to use a form with hidden inputs so I'm gonna say here input and then I'm gonna store in this input I'm gonna say hidden because we don't want to display it we just want it to be there but it's hidden we want it to be hidden and then I'm gonna give this input a name the name is ID and the value is the ID but the value is the ID of the product because in order to in order to remove a product we need to know its ID so I'm gonna say here smaller than and then percentage and then equals to item dot id and then percentage and then greater than now we need to activate this form so to activate this form we need to give it two things we need to give it method the method is post and action the action is the forward slash remove underscore product that's it now we need to create this remove uh, product URL in the index.js welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to create this remove product URL so I'm gonna open the index and in the index we need to create this we need to say here we need to say app dot post and then forward slash remove underscore product and then comma and then function request response request comma response and then we need here to remove the product from the cart inside this function so to remove the product from the cart we need to know that product and to know that product we need the ID so how can we get the ID from the form remember we have here the, this form in order to get the ID from the form we need to say var ID 
is equal to request dot body dot id that way we we will get the id from the car from the form from this form the id now is is here stored in this uh, uh, in this id variable now we need to get the cart in order to remove the product from the cart so i'm going to say var cart is equal to request dot session dot cart and then what i'm going to do is that i'm going to loop over the cart and the and and find and um, try to find the product id so if the id is there if the id matches the one in the cart we need to remove that product so i'm going to say for let for let uh, uh, i is equal to zero and then i is smaller than cart dot length i plus plus and then if cart if cart of i dot id is equal to the ID then we need to remove the product from the cart so to remove the product from the cart we need to use a function called splice so I'm gonna say cart dot splice splice and then I'm gonna pass the index of I'm gonna say cart and then index index of index of I and then we need to say comma one that way we will remove only one product which is the product that has this ID finally finally we need to recalculate recalculate the total because a product has been removed when a product is removed we need to recalculate the total so to recalculate the total we just need to call the calculate function I'm gonna call the calculate total function and I'm going to pass two parameters. The first one is the cart, and the second one is the request. And then we need to redirect, redirect the user to the cart page after the product is removed. To do this, we just need to say res.redirect. And then we need to redirect to forward slash cart. And we are done. Welcome back. Now what we need to do is that we need to test. So to, to test, first of all, make sure that your Apache web server is up and running and uh, your, uh, your MySQL database. And then click on View and then Terminal. And then Node. And then Index.js. And then hit Enter. Now let's head on over to the browser. In the browser, I'm going to refresh. And now I'm going to add the product to cart. Let me add the product to cart. And then I'm going to try to remove this product. If I click on remove, the product will be removed from the cart. As you can see, the product has been removed from the cart. Welcome back. Now what we need to do is that we need to work on the product quantity. We need to allow the customer to increase and or decrease the quantity of each item they have in the cart to do this we need to add two buttons here I'm gonna remove I'm gonna here uh, rename this uh, input I'm gonna say input uh, type submit and value is is minus here and then name is the name is gonna be here decrease decrease underscore product underscore quantity one dt and I'm gonna create another button I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna paste it below and I'm gonna say here plus and then I'm gonna say increase increase product quantity between them, we need to copy this line and paste it between them. I'm going to paste it here between these two. two and then I'm going to say input type number um, uh, quantity. The name is quantity. 
the value is 1 by default and then we can increase this or decrease this I'm gonna also say here read only read only and here I'm gonna say uh, text text instead of number if you don't put this in between the in between the uh, in decrease and in increase it's not gonna be it's gonna it's not gonna look uh, good because we want to display them we, we want to display the decrease on the left side and the the increase on the right side if I uh, hadn't done this I wouldn't have um, uh, have a I wouldn't have had a, a uh, good design because this must be between them now we need to create another input but this time this input is going to be hidden and this input uh, will store the product uh, product uh, will store the product um, uh, ID so I'm gonna say hidden and then value uh, the value is is uh, is going to be uh, smaller smaller than and then percentage and then equals to item dot ID and then percentage and then greater than and then the name the name is ID now we need to give this form method and action the method is post and the action the action is for slash edit underscore product underscore quantity quantity and we are done with this part here in this uh, HTML code the last thing that we need to do here in the in this form is that we need to display the quantity here it says one by default but we don't need this instead we need the edited quantity so we need to say here greater than and then percentage and then equals to and then item and then dot quantity one dt by default it's gonna be one but when user changes changes the quantity it will increase or decrease and we are done let me save here and we are done welcome back now we need to create this URL edit product quantity so in the index I'm gonna say app dot post and then forward slash edit underscore product underscore quantity one dt and then comma function request response rec press now the first step here is to get values values from input from the inputs so from the inputs we need to get everything we need to get the ID we need to get the decrease product quantity we need to get the quantity and we need to get the increase product quantity so I'm gonna get all of them to get all of them we just need to say var ID for the ID and then I'm gonna say request dot and then body and then ID we need also the quantity I'm gonna say var quantity var quantity and then is equal to request dot body dot quantity quantity and then and then var var increase increase btn increase button is equal to request dot body dot increase underscore product underscore quantity and then var decrease button button is equal to request dot body dot decrease underscore product underscore quantity before we continue it's very important to double check your syntax because any any very small mistake could ruin your code so you wouldn't be able to continue if you have here a problem so make sure that your syntax is correct welcome back now we need to work on 
the increase and decrease button let's start with the increase button so before we uh, work on the increase button we need to get the cart from the cart session I'm gonna say from the session I'm gonna say cart is equal to request dot session dot cart because we need the cart in order to increase or decrease the quantity of a specific product now we need to check whether which which button user clicked on so if user I'm gonna say if if increase if user uh, clicked on the increase button we need to increase the quantity of that product so I'm gonna say if increase if increase button and then inside that increase button we need to loop over the cart and uh, get the get the product that the user wants to increase its quantity and increase the quantity of that product so I'm gonna say here for let I is equal to zero and then I is smaller than cart dot length and then I plus plus let me add here some space and here some space now we need to get we need to, in order to know which product the user wants to um, increase its quantity we need to compare it with the card ID so I'm gonna say if if card I of I dot ID is equal to the ID of of the pro of the product that the, that the user wants to increase its quantity then we need to increase the quantity here we need to increase the quantity however before we go ahead and increase the quantity we need to make sure that the quantity is already uh, greater than zero because if the quantity is uh, is less than the zero it doesn't make sense to um, have a quantity that is negative or zero we cannot have zero or a negative quantity therefore we need to say here if and then cart i cart of i dot quantity quantity if the quantity is greater than zero then we need to increase that uh, quantity we need here to say now inside this if statement we need to say cart of i dot quantity is equal to parse parse int parse int and then cart of i of i dot quantity quantity plus one plus one that's it now we will be able to increase the quantity now for decreasing uh, the quantity before we work on decreasing the quantity we need we always need to recalculate the total so here I'm gonna say calculate total and then I'm gonna pass two things I'm gonna pass the cart and I'm gonna pass the request and then finally we need to redirect to the uh, to the cart I'm gonna say response dot redirect and then cart for slash cart now we need to work on the decrease decrease is gonna be the same I'm gonna copy the same exact code and then I'm gonna paste it here however the only difference is that we here need to say decrease button decrease button and here we need to say minus one we need to say minus uh, one this is very very important and also here we need to say if quantity if cart quantity is greater than one and we are done finally we need to fix here a typo I should say decrease decrease button decrease button and here decrease decrease uh, product quantity and here also we need to say decrease decrease so make sure that the spelling is correct if you have a typo it's not gonna work none of this will work so make sure that double check your syntax and make sure that uh, the spelling is also correct. Let's now test. I'm gonna click on view and then terminal. 
and then I'm gonna say in node index.js also make sure that your Apache web server is up and running and also your MySQL database now let me add something to cart for example this and then I'm gonna try to increase it if I increase it it will increase as you can see too if I click on minus it will go to 1 and if I click on minus one more time it will not go below 1 because 1 is the um, is the least amount that the user can buy so we cannot sell zero products it doesn't make sense welcome back now we need to create three tables so first you need to open XAMPP and make sure that the server the My MySQL database and the Apache web server both are up and running and then in the browser go to localhost forward slash dashboard and then click on PHP my admin and then select the database this is the database node project and then uh, click here um, type here the name of the table so the name of the table that I'm going to create is called orders which is going to store the orders of your customers and then we need to here specify the number of uh, the number of columns that we have so we need nine we need here nine nine columns and then I'm going to click on go the first column is the ID I'm going to say ID and it's going to be integer and it, it's going to be auto increment and it is, it's going to also be the primary key then we need the cost the cost is decimal decimal 8 2 and then we need the name the name of the person and it's going to be varkar var varkar 255 we also need the email which is going to be varkar 255 we need the status which is going to be varkar 255 we also need the uh, city which is going to be also varkar 255 and then address address the address is going to be text the phone number phone which is going to be varkar 255 and then we need date and the date is going to be date time date time here we need to select date time and click on click on save and this is going to create the table the second table that we need to create is called order items and it will have eight columns so I'm going to say here order underscore items and it will have ID and then and then um, order ID order ID and then product ID and then product name product product name and then product price and image product price and then product image and then product quantity quantity and then order date so we need ID and then order ID and then product ID and then product uh, name first product name and then product price and then product image image and then product quantity product quantity quantity and then order uh, date order date the ID is going to be integer auto increment primary the order ID is going to be integer the, the product ID is integer the product name is var car 
255 the price is decimal 8 to 8,2 the product image is going to be VARCAR 255 we also have the product quantity the quantity is going to be integer the order date is going to be date and then click on save the third table that we need is going to be the payments so I'm going to click on new and then I'm going to create this table this table will need only four columns I'm going to name it payments and then we need the ID ID it's going to be auto increment and primary primary auto increment primary make sure that this is primary and then we need uh, order ID which is going to be integer and then we need transaction transaction underscore ID the transaction ID can be text or varcar let's say text and then date the date will be date time date time make sure that the date is date time and then click on save now you should have three ta three new tables here you should have payments you should have orders you should have order items and also you should have products so we have these tables welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to use the big int instead of integer so I'm going to open uh, my PHP, my admin, and then we need to open the database, and then we need to open three tables. The first table is the orders table. Click on it, and then click on structure, and then you need to change this to big int. So I'm going to click on uh, change, and make sure that this here says big int. So big, again, that, that, that's big int. Big int. So let me remove this. I'm going to say big and um, for the um, for make sure that it's big end and make sure that this is empty here uh, make sure that you keep it uh, you keep it empty and it will be assigned automatically by the database the second thing is that we need to open the order items and we need to click on structure and then we need to change these three to big end I'm going to say change big and then remove this and then save and then here big end remove this and then big end and then save and also the product ID big end and then remove this and then in the payments table we need to change also the ID structure and then change big end and here as well big end so you might be you might be wondering why would we want to do this the reason is because sometimes we we might want to store long longer uh, longer number so if the number is smaller than 11 digits uh, uh, is, is greater than uh, 11 digits it will not be stored therefore when we say big int when we assign a, a field uh, to be a big int we will be able to store up to 20 um, digits which is a very big number because usually the IDs are uh, numbers and they are too long therefore whenever we use whenever we use the big int we will be able to store longer numbers which is very important when it comes to IDs and ordered IDs welcome back now we need to start working on the checkout uh, uh, form so in order to check out we need to do we need to have two links one for displaying the checkout page and one for taking the data from the field from the fields from the inputs 
So I'm going to say app dot get and then forward slash checkout. So this is going to take the user to the checkout page. Checkout and then comma and then function and then res re, uh, request response. And then inside this function, uh, we just need to take the user to the checkout page. So I'm going to say res dot render and then we need to say pages for slash checkout that's it this function is just going to take the user to the checkout page we need to create another route another URL called place order and it's going to be of a post request so I'm going to say app dot post and then for slash place underscore order this this URL is going to handle submitting the form. So I'm going to say here comma and then function and then we need to say request comma response. Now before I work on this function uh, on this uh, root or URL let's use these in HTML. So I'm going to open the uh, I'm going to open the views and then I'm going to open the cart. In the cart the cart button here this button we need to say method and the method is going to be get and we need to say action the action action the action is going to be equal to for slash for slash checkout because once the user clicks on the um on this we need to check out we need to take the user to the checkout page um on the other hand the checkout uh, uh, page will will allow us to submit the data will allow us to take data from the user from the user so here in this checkout we need to say in the form we need to say method and action method the method is going to be post and the action the action is going to be for slash place underscore order this is very very important we need to place the order using this and we are done with this we just need to make sure that here uh, this has na uh, these fields uh, have names name 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 for the name uh, name and for the email a uh, name email for the phone the name of the phone is phone the name of the city is city and the name of the address is address uh, now we need to work on the place order of uh, root or URL in order to take this this data from the form. Welcome back. Let's now work on the place order. In order to uh, take the data from the user from the form, we need to say we need to create variables. So I'm going to start with the I'm going to start with the name. I'm going to say var name is equal to request dot body dot name. And then we have after the name we have the email. The second thing we have is the email and then phone number so I'm gonna say var email is equal to request body email and then var phone is equal to request body phone and then var city is equal is equal to request dot body dot city and then address var address is equal to request dot body dot address we also need the cost and the status and the date so the cost is stored in the session so we can say var, var cost is equal to request dot session dot total the total is the total amount that is stored in the session and is the the amount that will be charged uh, the the customer will be charged uh, next we need the status whether it's paid or not obviously it's not paid the default is not paid so I'm gonna say var status is equal to not paid and then after the user um, or the customer pays, we change this from not paid to paid. We also need to specify the date. I'm going to say var date 
is equal to new date. The next step is that we need to insert these into the database. And to insert these into the database, first we need to copy a line of code, which is uh, actually a, a few lines, which is my connection. I'm going to copy this. Copy. And then I'm going to paste it here below this. And then I'm going to store it in a variable called con. var con is equal to this. And then we need to use this con to connect to the database. So I'm going to say con dot connect connect and then this is going to take a callback function with an error it's going to say error error and then if we have an error we need to say if error if there is an error we need to display that error in the console I'm going to say console dot log and then error else 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 it means that there is no error if there is no error we will go ahead and uh, insert the data into the database so to insert into the database we we first need to have a query that will insert to the database I'm gonna say var query is equal to uh, insert in insert into orders which is the table that we want to insert uh, to and then what we want to insert is that we want to insert the cost, the name, the email, the uh, status, the city, the address, the phone, and the date, and then values 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 question mark and then and then after this we need to uh, we need to um, create an array with the values that we want to insert into the database so I'm going to say var values is equal to an array with these values first cost and then comma name and then email and then status and then address and then phone and then date this values now will be replaced by uh, this question mark will be replace uh, will replace the the values will will replace the question mark uh, and uh, finally we need to call a function called uh, query I'm gonna say con dot query and then we need to pass the query and then question mark and then um, comma and then in our array we need to say values and then comma and then arrow function with uh, error and result I'm gonna say error and then comma result and then inside this we just need to return to the to, to any page uh, preferably to a thank you page or something like this so I'm gonna say response dot redirect and then I'm gonna redirect to for uh, for slash thank uh, thank you page or to the payment page so for now I'm just gonna uh, uh, here say uh, payment for slash payment and later I'm gonna work on it but for now I'm gonna keep it like this but we need to create here a payment we need to say new and then payment dot e j s also here I should say uh, yeah, cost because here cost is the first one and then name email status and then city I forgot to say here city and then comma and then address so make sure that they are one two three four five six seven eight and here one two three four five six seven eight another thing that we need to fix is that here this we need to add this in another array so we have to say here array and then here we close the curly uh, the uh, square uh, bracket so we need to add it in double arrays so this is very very important if you don't if you don't add this into another array it's not gonna work so again this is double array array here 
and then we pass it in pass another array into the first one so make sure that you have two arrays also here we need to say app dot get and then for slash payment payment and then comma and then function and then response comma request request response and then we need to return to the payment page I'm gonna say res dot render and then we need to render we need to return to the we need to say for slash and then we need to say uh, pages and then for slash payment so this is very very important you need to add all of these things welcome back in the checkout page we need to pass the uh, total because we want to display the total in the checkout page so to display the total I'm gonna say var total is equal to request dot session dot total and then I'm gonna pass the total down to the to the checkout I'm gonna say here comma and then uh, object and then total total and then in the in the pit in the checkout let me open the checkout in the checkout we need to display here the total I'm gonna say greater than uh, sm smaller than and then percentage and then equals to total total and then and then great uh, then percentage and then greater than and we are done welcome back let's now test so in order to test I'm gonna open the terminal I'm gonna click on view and then terminal and then I'm gonna say node index.js and also make sure that your Apache web server and MySQL both are up and running now in the browser let me refresh localhost 8080 and this is gonna take me to the to the uh, to the website let me now add something to cart I'm gonna add this to cart and then I'm gonna check out let me check out I'm gonna fill out the form which is this form let me fill out this form and let me click on check out so if I click on check out as you can see it took me to the payment page which is empty for now let's check the database so in order to check the database I'm gonna to go to localhost and then dashboard now in the PHP my admin let me open the orders table I'm gonna open the uh, node uh, project and then I'm gonna open the orders table so as you can see if you open the orders you'll find the order has been inserted into the database welcome back now what we need to do is that we need to add a new field to the orders table so I'm gonna here create uh, one after the date I'm gonna click on go and then I'm gonna say product products underscore IDs so the IDs um, of the products that we want to store and it's gonna be text and then I'm gonna click on save now in our application we need to create here a variable called var products underscore IDs and to get these IDs we need to use the session cart I'm gonna say var cart is equal to request dot session dot cart and then we need to loop over this we need to say for let i is equal to zero i smaller than cart dot length i plus plus and then inside this loop we need to append the IDs of the products to the products uh, IDs I'm gonna say products underscore IDs is equal to products 
underscore IDs plus cart of I cart of I dot ID and then finally uh, here we need to say plus and then comma because we need to add comma between between the product IDs and then we need here to pass it we need to say comma and then products IDs and also here we need to say comma and then products underscore IDs and we are done and here we need to say uh, products IDs is equal to null is equal to empty string so it must be equal to empty string at the beginning also here I have a typo I should say uh, font not product here I should say font so make sure that these um, elements match the ones in the query so first we have cost and then name and then email and then status and then city and then address and then phone and then date and finally products IDs so make sure that here cost name email status city address phone date products IDs match the ones in the query let's now integrate a payment system into our project and to do this we need to select a payment system and I'm going to be using PayPal because PayPal is one of the best payment options out there and I think it's going to be just amazing and it's going to help us a lot and uh, uh, I think it's just one of the best options and I'm going to be selecting PayPal so in order to start uh, integrating PayPal the process first of all you need to know that the process is pretty long and I'm gonna be dividing the process into into a uh, small and uh, few steps short steps so that you understand so the first step is that you need to create a PayPal account you need to head on over to paypal.com and then create an account however you need to create a business account not a personal account so just head on over to paypal.com and then click on sign up and then after you click on sign up you need to select business account not personal account you need to select business account and then click on next and uh, if you don't find this option by the way you need to you need to convert your account uh, after you create a personal account you need to convert the account to a business account from your account after registration if you don't find this option but you will find this option for many countries so here what you need to do is that you need to type your email and that's it pretty simple just type your email and then re of course you need to verify your email and that's it so the process is very simple and straightforward I'm not gonna continue because I already have a PayPal account so uh, uh, here all you need to do is, uh, is that you need to type your email and then click on continue and just fill out the next uh, form that you are gonna get because the form will um, will need to be filled and then just confirm your email so that's it and uh, of course you need to verify your email so after you have done all of this and uh, and after you have uh, finished uh, registering you need to head on over to developer.paypal.com again that's developer.paypal.com this is the URL that we need to use in order to be able to uh, in integrate PayPal into our uh, project. So you need again to head on over to PayPal uh, developer.paypal.com and then click on log in to dashboard. And then you need to type the email and the password that you have just created with with PayPal, the business account here. So let me type my business account here so after you type your email you just need to click on next and then you need to type your password here and then you need to click on login so after you log in you will find your in your dashboard you will find apps and what an app me what what an app um, is an app is just uh, a project so for, for every project that you want to integrate um, uh, PayPal into you need to create a separate app for it and I'm going to be showing you how to use apps and what's important here is that 
we have two tabs here, one for sandbox and the other for live. The sandbox is used for testing. The live, of course, is used in whenever you are ready and you want to publish your application where real people will pay real money and uh, uh, will use your, your projects or web applications, websites, whatever. Uh, so here on the left side, we have your account, we have the sandbox. So what's important here is the sandbox. Here you need to click on accounts. And you need to create two accounts. One account will represent the buyer and the other one will represent the owner. Because the buyer is going to pay to the owner. So you need to create two accounts. Let me show you how you can do that. First, you need to click here on create account. And now I'm going to create an account which is going to be a personal buyer account. So the buyer, again, will pay to the business account. So I'm going to here select the country. You need to select your country and then click on create. And then here it's going to say the sandbox account was created successfully. So this is a sandbox account. This is a testing account. So we need to create another account that will represent the owner, the, the business. So you need to click here again on create account. And then you need to create a new account, which is going to be this time a business account. Click on business. And then you need to select your country. I'm going to be selecting here the United States. Uh, and uh, then click on create. And then here it's going to say again the, the sandbox account was created successfully. And if you scroll, if you scroll, you'll, you will find all of the accounts that you have. So here I have these accounts that I just created. One is a business account, which is going to represent the uh, owner. And the other one is the buyer, uh, which, which represents the, the customer or the buyer or the user. So the personal account will pay to the business. And you need to remember these emails. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to be using, of course, in, in order to pay and in order to test, we, we need to use the I need to log in to the system using this personal account I'm gonna and I'm gonna be showing you that because the personal again the this account will pay to the business account so you should by now have these two accounts on this on these three dots and then click on edit uh, account edit view uh, view edit account you will find that this account has been initialized with a money with a uh, with around uh, 5,000 I think if you click on funding you will find that it it contain it uh, it uh, it has five thousand dollars. So this account has five so five thousand dollars. And for the business account, it will if you click on funding. If you click on funding here, funding, you will find that it has also five thousand dollars. So the reason why this is important is because after testing, the amount of money will increase for the for the business and will decrease for the owner, for the personal account. So this is the second step. The third step is to create an app. So you need to click on My Apps and Credentials and create a new app. So here what you need to do is that you need to click on Create App here. Click on Create App and you will be able to create an app. So this is very, very important. You need to create an app and you need to give it a name. I'm going to say here my project my project just my project and then i'm going to click on uh here you need to select your merchant or uh platform uh, and here i'm going to select uh, this option and then this is very important you need to select the business account so the business account that's that i have just created is this one is this email and and then just click on create app that's it pretty simple now, after you create an app, you will find that this app has a client ID and a secret. These two are important because these two I'm going to be using to add, to add them into our project. And uh, by using these, we will be able to connect to PayPal. Otherwise, we will not be able to connect to PayPal. So these uh, client ID and secret are the sandbox, the sandbox API credentials. And whenever we go live, we will be using, we will be requesting another API, uh, another uh, uh, client ID and secret. 
uh, and change we we also need to change the 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 project here from sandbox to a live that's it and you will be able to use this for real money so that people will pay you so here as you can see here it says uh, sandbox uh, API credentials so this is the sandbox this is for testing this is just for testing and if you scroll you'll find many options and by default you will be have you will have these options accept payments invoicing just keep these as uh, they are because this because these are important you need to welcome back so now if you click on my apps and credentials you will find all of your apps and here if you click on live you will find your project here if you click on it you will find the live credentials so what is the difference between sandbox and live live credentials will allow you to receive real money from users so if I click on my project here you will find here it says my project and you will find PayPal account and client ID and secret so these three are very important because these three will represent the live credentials so the PayPal account is the is your real pay, PayPal account the client ID you will use in order to connect to PayPal and get real money and of course the secret if you click on this show it's gonna show you the secret key and this is for the live if you go back and click on my apps and if you click on sandbox you will find here your project if you click on it you will find your credentials, the uh, sandbox account, the client ID, and the secret. But this is for testing. So again, you have two options. You have the sandbox and uh, the live. The sandbox is used for testing, which, which I'm going to be using. And then whenever we go live, we just need to use the live credentials. That's it. Pretty simple. Welcome back. Let's now work on the payment page. So in the payment page, we need to copy the code from the cart because it's going to be similar. I'm going to copy the cart. Uh, the code from the cart and then I'm going to paste it in the payment however I'm going to remove the table this table let me show you what I'm going to do I'm going to remove this table this table I'm going to remove it the complete section so we will end up with this we need to say payment here I'm going to say payment the next step is that we need to get the uh, PayPal's button and display it here welcome back so now it's time to start integrating PayPal into our project and the first step is that you need to log into your uh, developer.paypal.com and then we need to select one of the options so first of all you need to know that in order to integrate uh, PayPal into your project there are so many options and I'm going to be using an option called checkout so you need here after you log in you need to click on Docs just hover over it and then here click on get started here uh, click on get started and after you click on get started just click on accept payments accept payments and then click on check out so this is the method that I'm going to be using It's called check out and uh, this method is going to allow us to uh, receive payments from customers so after you click on check out just click on set up standard payments click on it and as you can see this method is going to allow us to add a button that we can customize and uh, uh, add the the uh, the amount of money that we want to receive uh, from customers and uh, all you need to do now is that you need to click on integrate PayPal checkout for online payments click on it and uh, here it's going to give you a very long uh, steps here a very long guide but the problem with PayPal is that it's very complicated therefore I'm going to make the process very easy for you by just dividing the steps into short and easy steps so the first step is that here in this page all you need to do is that we need to get a code a piece of code that's gonna generate the button that you have that you have seen uh, shortly which is this button that code is going to generate that button into our website in, into our project and then we will be able to receive payment from our customers and before I continue you need to know that a uh, PayPal uh, regularly uh, and cons uh, consistently changes the location of of this of the uh, 
of, uh, of this method uh, in their website. So you need to, sometimes you might not find it uh, uh, here, so you need to look for it. You need to click again on Docs and then get started and then look for it. Uh, but it's, the method is called Checkout and then just set up standard payments and then integrate. Now, the first step is that we need to get the code from PayPal. So the code is this code. This is the code. Let me show you where is the code. This is the code. The code is, starts from here. So you need to start copying from here this script and all the way down to the end of the script. You need to scroll and copy all of this code. You need, you need to copy all of this code. Let me copy all of this code. Let me copy all of this code. So we need to get all of this code. Let me copy it. So we need this code. Don't copy, co don't copy the other part. Just copy starting from the script all the way to the end of the script. Copy it. Just copy it. And then you need to head on over to your uh, project and paste it. And I'm going to show you where you need to paste it because you, of course, you shouldn't paste it uh, any uh, at uh, in any file. You need to paste it at a specific location. So I'm going to paste the code in the bottom. In the bottom of this page, what we want to do is that we want to paste the code here. Paste. And then we need to get the, uh, here, we need to get, to get the client ID. So let me get the client ID and replace it with this. I'm going to remove this test. As you can see here, it says Client ID is equal to test. We need to remove this test and then we need to paste the client ID. So in PayPal, just head on over again to your account and login and then click on your project. The project that you are using for this, uh, uh, the, the project that you have created for this project. So I'm going to click on it. So once you click on it, you will find the sandbox account and the client ID. You need to copy your client ID and Head on over back to the to the uh, to the to the project. So let me copy. Let me copy my client ID. So I'm gonna paste the client ID here. I'm gonna paste it and make sure that you paste it in the right place. So you need to paste it right after the equals. So here, client hyphen ID is equal to, and then paste your client ID, and then currency and currency is equal to USD. So we are done with this part. The next step is that we need to copy this. We need to copy it. PayPal button container, this container. We need to copy, copy it, and then remove it, and then paste it here, here. We need to paste it right after the payment here. We need to paste it here, paste. So this is the uh, container. This is the button itself. The button will be displayed here. Another thing we need to do is that we need to change the total. So here we have the total is this. We need to open the uh, index, JS, and then in the index, in the payment, we need to pass here. We need to say var total is equal to, and then we need to get the total from the session. I'm going to say request dot body dot uh, request that session dot total and then we need to pass the total here I'm gonna say comma and then total total and then I'm gonna I'm gonna here display the total I'm gonna here uh, pass the total instead of this uh, hard-coded number I'm gonna say here smaller than and then percentage and then greater than and then equals to and then percentage and then greater than and in between we need to say total total and we are done also here above the button I'm going to display the total I'm going to say h2 and then I'm going to say total and then dollar sign and then greater than uh, smaller than and then percentage and then equals to and then total, and then percentage, and then greater than. And let's also center this. I'm going to center this. I'm going to say te uh, text center. And we are done 
Finally, we just need to click on File and then Save. And we are done. Let's now test. So I'm going to add something to cart, for example this. And I'm going to click on Check Out. And then I'm going to fill out this form. And then I'm going to click on Check Out. So if I click on Check Out, I will be taken to the payment page. And as you can see, the payment page will display this total, and we, we have the PayPal's button. 